nicely. Well, it's good to see so many um, uh, here today. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, for uh, the Jamie McCoy webinar. Uh, Jamie is a 2013 Nuffield Scholar uh, and she was generously sponsored by Alan and Anne Beckett. Uh, she was also on the very first group of scholars uh, that uh, I looked after uh, and uh, took, uh, we took um, them all to Canada uh, and had an extremely good time visiting places that I for one had never been to before. Uh, Jamie also traveled uh, on the 2014 GFP tour, uh, kindly supported uh, by Roger Mercer. Her study, however, was to look at opportunities for the small family farm. She farms alongside her partner in West Wales. They run a mixed enterprise, which we will hear more about during her presentation. But since her scholarship, she, jo, Jamie has implemented a number of the ideas she saw whilst traveling. Jamie says that her Nuffield Farming Scholarship not only inspired her with many ideas, but also introduced her to a support network, that is the Nuffield family. And, and that support network enabled her to bring ideas that she'd seen on her study to reality, and she's been delighted to be able to start repaying some of the favors that she's benefited from during her scholarship. Please do post questions at any time during the session on chat. Uh, we will pick them up. Uh, we will take all questions at the end of Jamie's presentation uh, and we will uh, endeavor to uh, uh, invite the person are setting the question uh, to give it uh, themselves. So that's plenty enough for me. Let me now hand over to Jamie uh, and I look forward to a thoroughly enjoying session. Thank you. Oh, thanks. thanks very much for that introduction and absolutely it is an honour, it's always an honour to be asked to do anything Nuffield um, and you know now a few years down the line I do feel like the opportunity to pass on a little bit of what I might have learned and almost sort of prove that I've been implementing some of this stuff is a real honour. You can't repay the favours that were afforded to you um, in a Nuffield to the same people that that offered you those favours, but I am a big believer in, in paying them forward. So yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And yes, I was 2013 Nuffield Beckett Scholar um, and am a sort of continually benefiting from um, being not just a Nuffield scholar, but particularly a Beckett scholar, um, because we do all get together quite rare. Um, so yeah, that's something that I am particularly grateful for. And um, when I applied for my Nuffield farming scholarship, um, we were sort of quite new, I suppose, in our farming journey. Um, I was taking on an increased role on the farm with my partner um, we we took on his family farm um, which was previous in the previous generation was farmed sort of between two brothers so my partner's father and uncle farmed together and um, when we took on the farm it was split between my partner and his cousin but we were lucky enough to be in the position that we could take on a, a bigger share so we bought into a bigger share really of family farm so we were uh, we inherited part and we had to purchase part so that meant that with the farm we got some debt um, and that really kind of focused the mind on the fact that you have to build something you have to make something of that you have to repay that debt um, so I was working full-time in agricultural knowledge exchange and I'm sure you realized that reason that I was looking at opportunities for the small family farm was potentially a little bit selfish. I really wanted to know what direction we could go in ourselves. Um, so 
I visited lots of fascinating places, but at this point, I think I should emphasize that some of the learnings that I benefited most from those on our own doorstep in Wales, in the UK, in Ireland. Um, and I, as you've mentioned um, in the introduction, I was also a beneficiary of um, a Roger Mercer sponsorship to attend the India Global Focus Programme, um, which really meant that I was able to visit some places that perhaps I wouldn't have had the confidence to go to by myself. Um, India, Qatar, probably prime examples of that. And I'm going to call upon some of that experience during this presentation um, when we're talking about resilience, I suppose. So, we're now eight years on from my scholarship, and I do not know where those eight years have gone. Um, but we're now milking 200 dairy cows. We're an autumn block system. Um, we've expanded the use from sort of it was about 100 use when I started the scholarship. We've gone up 300, um, and we've started at lots of small things, I suppose, that are bolt-ons to that core business. So we do a bit of Airbnb, we keep a few pigs and supply people in the village with uh, sausages. We've got some solar panels. Um, I've started to pick your own pumpkin enterprise. We've invested outside of agriculture, so a little bit of property, and that includes um, a small laundrette in our local town. And more recently, and what we're currently most excited about, is that we've installed a milk processing facility on our farm um, in a container, and we've got a milk vending machine uh, down in our local town. So that's very new for us. Um, it's all part of, I suppose, our mission to make our business more resilient. Um, I still work full time off the farm. I'm part of the AHDB dairy team, and that is a job that I do absolutely love. Um, and again, eight years on, still see opportunity everywhere in agriculture. Um, it doesn't matter about what business, what scale, what structure. Um, I appreciate that it takes a bit of hard work um, and that we shouldn't all be working harder. We should perhaps be working smarter. Um, and perhaps we all need to think about lean in our businesses in the UK. But there are opportunities everywhere. Um, and at the bottom of this slide, you'll see that I've put it is tough. Um, I think there are loads of opportunities. There are also lots of challenges. And um, this series was about resilience. So I really thought that I should focus on, on some of that um, and how that applies to us on our farm and how that's applied to my Nuffield journey, I suppose. So resilience. What makes a resilient business? What makes a resilient person? Well, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, so I've put up a picture of our farm here um, and it kind of makes me laugh because I'm not sure if our business is resilient enough. I'm not sure if I'm resilient enough. Um, I suppose that's what we're on a mission to do every day is improve our resilience. Um, and for me, not about survival. I want to be able to thrive in the business that we're on. So as with every presentation, if you get given a presentation, you have to have to go to the dictionary. So I went to the dictionary and I looked up what does resilient mean? Um, be able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. That's fine. There's a definition of resilient. However, we you use words like sustainable in agriculture for many many years and what those words mean to certain people will be different to what that means to somebody else um, you know i could plant um, drought tolerant grass species in order to improve my resilience to drought and then I'm faced with a flood. So what I've done ultimately wouldn't have improved my overall business resilience. Um, and short of a crystal ball, um, all we can do is guess at what the next challenge might be. Um, again, resilience, I think, comes down to, um, is, it, is it just an ability to withstand a crisis? I mean, sometimes I think resilience would have to mean an ability to withstand the 
constant attrition of challenges that we're faced. So for one business, crisis might be COVID or it might be Brexit. Um, and for another business on the very same day, their challenge is just a series of small things from a leaking pipe to a lame cow. Um, and some days those small things are the things that can really, um, I don't know, eat away at your confidence and your mental health and all of those things. So I'm not going to give you the answer of what a resilient business is, and I, I, you know, it's going to be different for everyone. Um, I want to enjoy farming. I want to enjoy what I'm choosing to spend my time doing. I want things to feel manageable for us at home on our farm. And I am quite a believer in a mixed farming system because I feel like, you know, when, when one market is high, another is low, but perhaps that they can compensate for each other. So the route that we've gone down on our farm has been a mixed farming one and about bringing in sort of multiple um, options, multiple income streams. Um, so I'm going to return now to a slide that if you've seen my Nuffield presentation, you've seen this slide before. When I went traveling on my Nuffield, I quite literally met with hundreds of businesses all around the world. Um, and I tried to look at what the common threads were in those businesses. And successful businesses seem to have these five things nailed. And businesses that were perhaps struggling had holes in sort of one or more of these areas so I really do believe that attitude is altitude you know with a positive attitude and a, a can-do attitude and um, someone who's willing to search and um, hunt out solutions to problems um, that, that challenges can be overcome but on any business, not just a, a small family farm, um, you need some sort of strategy. However you look at that, whether you call it goals, whether you call it ambitions, um, whether you've got it written down, whether you haven't, um, a plan is critical. Um, and having the capability to carry out that plan is also really critical. Um, I suppose I want to emphasize here that I do believe you can buy in capability, you can upskill yourself if there's sort of gaps in, in skill sets. Um, Communication is probably one of the things that I think is most important in running a business, whether that's about simply giving instructions, whether that's about communicating with other stakeholders in your business, whether it's suppliers, whether it's the vet, whether it's customers, um, whether it's written, verbal, marketing, communication does play a really big part in sort of running a successful and a resilient business. Um, capital, you, know, you, need, you need some sort of capital to start, and I don't necessarily mean uh, money, um, that could be intellect or um, resource, but there is an element of you need you need something to build your business on and evaluation you know i did meet with businesses who had faced challenging times and they were doing everything to their strategy but perhaps their strategy was out of date um so that's sort of a whistle stop tour of common themes that i found in businesses when i was on my nuffield um when we're thinking about family farms, and I think if I can remember the statistics correctly, I think 89% of the people who work on farms around the world are a direct relation to the farm farms. And I think that this is relevant to everybody. Is that profitability is not the only measure of success. And if we've learned anything from COVID, surely we've learned that health and happiness are wealth that's worth having. Um, in business, profitability does have to be a big factor, main factor, I guess, in, in decisions and deciding which are the opportunities, which are the ones that are worth following up, um, because otherwise it's not a business. Um, so I do believe that outputs from business should be bankable. And anyone who's been to Bulls, the town in New Zealand, will have seen the, the signs in every shop window with some pun about 
bull. Um, and I always enjoy showing this slide because it, it kind of gives me fond memories of when I was traveling. And I'm sure that many of the people listening to this will also have visited exactly that, that place and stood in that spot and possibly even taken that exact same picture. Um, so when I came away from my scholarship, I looked at our own business and I thought about what opportunities there were for us. And I guess I wrote a list, um, diversification, collaboration, working with other people, working with the neighbors, um, had choices to make over whether we intensified or whether we extensified. Um, we looked at our overall efficiency, reducing cost of production, I guess that's just the daily mission. Um, and of course, adding value is an opportunity for, for, for all businesses, um, as long as you're not adding too much cost, I suppose, was the caveat there. Um, and I did a, what I call a total asset inventory. Um, I don't know that this is an official business tool, but it's, I guess it's the Amy McCoy method. Um, and I just looked at what we had, because we'd already gotten a really great start in life we had a farm we had some land we had buildings we have a home machines vehicles livestock and some capital so we had some physical things required to farm um, you know because we went on the bottom rung of the ladder by now we were sort of starting to progress up and we also have people in our business and I think people are sort of some of the most important differential points between businesses often as individuals characteristics attitude um myself and my partner um, we're not the only people involved in our business um but for the purposes of this um you know, we're both both hard working we've got a particular set of experience and practical skills um we're both adaptable we're willing to learn um one thing that came from Nuffield is that we became very accustomed to having visitors um, from all over the world, um, some at very short notice, um, you know, relative strangers turn up and stay in your home with you. Um, and it was great fun. Um, we have a particular attitude to risk. So myself and my partner are quite opposites and they do say opposites attract. So I am a bit tight, if we're honest, um, don't spend money willingly. Um, my my attitude to risk, my attitude to borrowing, I, I worry about owing people money. If you if you were to shout me a coffee somewhere, I would never forget about that. And I would worry about owing you a coffee until I had the opportunity to repay that favor. Um, my partner is much more comfortable with taking on long-term debt. Um, doesn't keep him awake at night at all. And I think that that does make us quite a strong combination. Um, I might be standing on the cliff edge of a decision and it takes him to push me over. Whereas I'd like to think that every now and then I hold him back from uh, making, making, the, making a jump that he might not survive. Um, so back to people, you know, we're friendly, we're reasonably imaginative. Um, and that is part of our asset inventory is who we are um, and everyone's people asset inventory will look very slightly different probably not better or worse just different um, and then we've got this kind of regional category so when i think about where we are located we're in west wales we're not too far from newcastle emlyn we're on the coast we've got some fantastic views and lots of people will tell you you can't live off a of view um, but I do think there are people out there willing to pay to enjoy what we enjoy every day. We've quite close proximity to some nice beaches and some local tourist hotspots. We're in Wales and there are some good grant funds available for helping sort of set up new businesses. Just down the road from us, there is a place called Food Centre Wales, which um, helps you know, people start up in the food and drink sector. And we've got organisations like Farming Connect, like AHDB, of course, I work for AHDB, so I must get that plug in there, um, help people with making decisions, um, business support, all that kind of thing. And that's, that's an asset. That's something that you could use to improve your business resilience. And of course, where we are, we've got a Welsh identity, um, which we're very proud of. Um, but when, when I... 
previous to doing my Nuffield, I perhaps hadn't identified what these things were that differentiated a Welsh identity or a British identity from perhaps other identities. Um, and people like Tony Evans would tell us about sweating our assets and double sweating them if you can. When you look at that inventory of what is available, um, then look at what's possible with those things. Um, so, for instance, I was able to look at that and think, right, we're accustomed to visitors, we're happy to share our home, we're going to do a little bit of Airbnb. Um, I was able to look at that and see that we had some buildings that were empty for part of the year and I was able to take in a couple of wieners and sell sausages to people in, in the local village. None of this is going to make me millions, but they're different income streams that we didn't have previously and I guess helped kind of um, diversify our offering. Um, not to mention it's quite fun, I enjoy setting up new things and new things um we started doing um open farm sunday because we'd become accustomed to visitors that was our next step um, and then we did that for a few years and worked out how to manage a group of people on our farm and several years down the line um after reflecting on some of the visits that had a real impact on me one of those was visiting a pumpkin pick your own patch in canada um and we decided to give that a go here. So again, all coming off this kind of asset inventory that I guess we have for our farm and everyone can have for themselves. Um, and I guess I just want to highlight that your asset inventory might be longer than mine, but it also mine. What can you do with a stick and some wire? Well, if that's all you've got, then if you're in India, you can build an elephant fence. Um, I don't know if that would really hold out elephants, but that is what that was. Um, Johnny Alvis was testing it, I think. Um, and it's absolutely possible to build something from nothing. This is Taffy, and people from my year group will know Taffy very, very well. He was a Dairy NZ extension officer, had lots of contacts in the dairy industry in New Zealand, and he set up a uh, bobby calf industry uh, rearing unit then if you like so he used his contacts to source some stock um, i think he used his charm to source some land and then he used the networks and the relationships that he had to um, go and pick up waste milk from farms to feed these calves he didn't have any housing available for them at all but there was a bit of a tin shack in the corner of this field and you know he and borrowed pallets and plastic bags to make it watertight and quite literally built a business from nothing and you know um, I hope I'm not doing him a disservice by by saying that because it that might have been the roots of where he started honestly he went on to, to thrive and got something you know really incredibly worthwhile from absolutely nothing and he made a huge impression on me um, and of course I came home thinking well I've already got this start, so I need to make more from what I've already got. Um, so back to thinking about improving resilience on a farm, you've got to use what you have at your disposal to make that start. You've got to think about what's your competitive advantage and also what are the people strengths in a business? Um, there'll be people that are involved in the business that you may not associate being part of it so in a family situation you know it might be that um dad is the farmer and um mum is I don't know, working full-time off the farm but her job might be marketeer and that therefore is skills that she could bring to benefit business um maybe son or daughter has got it skills can benefit the business so just thinking about an inventory of what you've got at your disposal what who skills um and not leaving anything off that list can really think help cement how people feel about their business how prepared people feel about what might be the next challenge and i guess make you more ready to deal with whatever the next challenge is um whether you can sweat those assets more than you already do so I'm going to go back to this list, um, which was the list that I'd given myself as I returned 
from my scholarship. Um, and you'll see that the picture in the background is me visiting the first milk vending machine that I'd ever visited. Um, and to think that now I've got a milk vending machine um, just a few years later is, is quite exciting. And those things are becoming quite commonplace, but at the time it was really innovative. Um, so what I wanted to do was answer the question really, are we walking the walk at Gorewell? Because I'm here today giving the talk, um, but I don't want this to just be words, I suppose. So we've taken that list and I'm trying to show how I've dressed those categories, if you like. So we have diversified. We're doing some things that are completely new to us. The pumpkin's completely new. Um, we're trying a bit of the direct sales we've invested outside of agriculture and Airbnb enterprise continues just as soon as COVID allows. Um, we have collaborated um, with neighbours. So my partner bought a forestry grade wood chipper because we had to do some tree work on our farm at home and we were struggling to get someone to do it. Um, so he decided he, you know, his attitude to spending money and risk is very different to mine, as I said before. So net trip to the Royal Welsh and the next thing there's this big machine arriving on the yard. Um, and so we worked with a contractor who is a digger driver. They bought the tree shears to actually do tree work at the beginning and another contractor who can do transport and we were able to get a contract with Bolak to um, supply them with biomass wood chip so that's very much his thing but it's it's something that I suppose has come from us thinking about what are our competitive advantages and we couldn't run the wood chipper if we didn't already have the tractors but it's about double sweating assets that we already have on the farm um, we have intensified, so we've invested in infrastructure, we've increased the cow numbers, built new sheds, um, slurry storage systems, that kind of thing. Um, and the efficiency cost of production, that is just the constant mission. Um, and I suppose if you're looking for examples of what we've done, we've gone to a block carving system. I'm lambing as many sheep as possible outdoors now, which is... Uh, good at when straw prices are where they are just now and I'm very happy with the weather this lambing time but if it would like to rain now I'd be really happy um and this adding value we're, we're going down the milk vending machine route which I can't offer too much reflection on yet because it is just so new but I guess I wanted to show that we're we're walking the walk we're trying to take a mixed farming approach to our own farm resilience um and I do love variety as well. So I suppose that's one of the things this, none of this would be for everybody. It's what feels right for us at Gorewell. So that is what our COVID secure pumpkin stall looked like this year. We weren't able to have the full marquee and the, the full experience. So we were quite literally a couple of trailers in the corner of the pumpkin patch. Um, but we sold out of pumpkins at five o'clock when the lockdown came on at six o'clock. So, um, yeah, regardless of how ramshackle that may look, it was success and um, very enjoyable experience. And it gives us a relationship with our community um, and it gave us a, a customer base that I can advertise the milk to as well. So one thing is like a stepping stone to the next thing for us every time um, we still milk cows that will remain the core of our business and um, everything else that I get excited about is peripheral and off the back of these cows um, the views are still fantastic I still love working with the sheep um, and I try and I guess improve my mental resilience all the time by taking a step back to look at these views and take stock of where we're at and what progress we've made. Um, I guess just taking a moment to smell the roses, isn't it? Um, as I said, it doesn't all go smoothly. So we would invested in a laundrette and had a fire, which was all very dramatic, um, several fire crews and lots of devastation. Um, at the time, not a great experience, um, you know, when you've just invested and suddenly see it all going up in flames, literally. Um, and that closed us down for well over a year. We lost a tenant in the flat above, which has obviously been a little bit of a financial hit whilst we had to do all of this work. With every challenge comes an opportunity. So 
we could refit the space and this was the opportunity that really created the space for the milk vending machine so milk vending machine is now in that location it's still not all plain sailing you have to be resilient in anything because this is day two of our grand new venture and you can see that there's milk all over the floor which was absolutely not the plan so you know what does make a resilient farmer sometimes it is just the size of your mop and bucket i think um needless to say that's all sorted now no further issues um but again you get excited about these things you you, you invest emotionally financially you, you're invested in these things and it, it is a bit of a, a hit to morale when things don't go right but of course no one ever talks about how things don't go right and um, people talk about the glory stories so i thought i'd share a couple of our disasters um and honestly i could share hundreds of photographs of you know broken water pipes or you know, the challenges that we face every day and they're the same on on every farm but it takes a bit of resilience a bit of grit to guide through these things and we've had a lot of help along the way we've had a bit of help from the nhs in fact when my partner had a farm accident and uh, was yeah required pretty emergency plastic surgery to make sure that his fingers survived um and you know another challenge the silver lining of that was it was an opportunity for me to really step up and um I guess take some of the pressure off him so again in the long run i guess we could say positive experience um, i don't think he was saying that on that day um so yeah sometimes what resilience looks like is getting wrapped up against cold getting stuck into the mud taking your number one teammate with you um and kind of cracking on with the work sometimes it's about coming back swinging from those disastrous days um, and I guess it's about you know, the sun comes up again every morning the day after a disaster the sun comes up again and kind of mental resilience and you keep going I guess for me that's what 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 resilience is and being able to appreciate the small things that, that successes are made up of I suppose so things have tested our resilience so far um we're still here i don't know for how long because i don't know what tomorrow's challenge will be um but the question is are we doing everything we can to make ourselves as resilient as possible and i guess i'll leave you with the question are you Jamie, thank you very much indeed. That was a, uh, a wonderful presentation, uh, so open, uh, and thank you for being so uh, honest uh, with us. Uh, what I would have felt if I'd seen that brand new uh, milk dispenser pouring milk all over the floor uh, on day two, um, I dread to think there would have been a few choice words about the supplier, uh, I'm sure. Uh, and then, of course, I'd have discovered it was my fault for not tightening the washer up properly. Um, but thank you very much indeed for that. Um, let's move on to two questions. Uh, I asked you.